From the progeny of Adam, there came a man named Idris. We are told in narrations that he was called Idris because he studied Darasa about God's creation a lot. He lived in the city now known as Kufa. God chose Idris as a prophet to confirm the teachings of his forefather, Adam. He was patient, righteous, and respected among the people. During Idris's time, there was a tyrannical king. During a field trip, the king came upon a beautiful green land. The king was told it belonged to a man who believed in the religion of Idris. The king was amazed with the beauty of the land. He ordered the owner of the land to be brought to him. He told the man to give him the land or sell it to him. The man refused to sell it because he needed it for his family. The king became enraged and returned to his castle to make a further decision. The king's wife was intelligent and cunning, and he often turned to her for advice. He asked her for help. She plotted and said, If he doesn't believe in the religion of the king, the pagan religion, you will be justified in killing him and taking his land. The king accepted her plot and told her to execute it. When the man was killed and his property was taken away, God became enraged. God sent a message to Idris telling him, Go to this tyrant and tell him, Was it not enough that you killed God's servant without just cause? Did you have to take his property and leave his family hungry and homeless too? God swears he will avenge these crimes on you in this life and in the hereafter. Idris delivered God's message without fear. In response, the king threatened him and drove him out of his company, but spared his life because of his reputation as a righteous man. Once again, the king called on his wife and sought her counsel. She suggested to send someone to kill Idris to prove God's threats don't mean anything. She sent some men to kill Idris. Idris's companions found out about the king's plot and informed Idris that his life was in danger. He turned to God and prayed. God told him to leave the city and leave the king to him. Idris said to God, My Lord, I ask you that you do not let it rain in this city and its surrounding areas until I ask you to. God granted Idris his wish and withheld rain from this city. Idris left the city and hid himself in a cave at the top of a distant mountain and remained there in solitude for the next 20 years. He would fast during the days and God would send an angel to bring him food every evening so that he could break his fast. And just as God promised, he stripped the tyrannical king of his power and took his life away. Sadly, one tyrant was replaced by another. In this time, it still never rained a drop his people suffered and were forced to buy all that they could from distant lands. The people realized that it was Idris's prayer that brought the city to its knees and that they shouldn't have been supporting the tyrannical king. They understood that they would only find relief by begging God to show them mercy. They gathered together in humility and began praying all together with tears of repentance. The only thing preventing the rain was the promise God made with Idris. To allow Idris to grow in patience, God tested him. God told the angel to stop bringing food to Idris. That evening, Idris awaited his food, and when it did not come, he was puzzled, but he was patient. On the second day, his hunger became harder to bear. On the third, he was unable to bear it any longer. He prayed to God asking for answers. God replied, Idris, you were so worried that I withheld your provision only for three days, but you did not worry too much for the people of your city, though they have hungered for twenty years. I made you taste hunger, but you have shown too little patience. Hunger drove Idris out of his cave and into the city in search of food. He saw smoke coming from a chimney, so he hurried to that house. The woman who lived there had made two small loaves of bread, one for herself and another for her child. Idris asked her to share some of her bread to save his life. She replied without recognizing him, Prophet Idris's prayer against us has left us with nothing extra to feed anyone. You must seek your provisions from the people of another city. Idris said, At least provide me with enough to give my legs the strength to carry me to another city. She replied, I have only these two loaves, 
one for me and the other for my son. If I give you mine, I will die, and if I give you his, he will die. Idris said, Your son is small, half a loaf will suffice him, and half will carry me to my destination. She agreed, but when she gave half of her son's loaf to Idris, her son became so upset that in his weakened state, he died. She became overwhelmed with grief, but Idris told her, Do not worry, I shall revive him by God's permission. He prayed, O soul that has just departed from the body of this child, return by God's permission to his body, for I am Prophet Idris. The woman could not believe her eyes as soon as her son came back to life. She looked at Idris and could only manage to say, You are Idris? When reality hit her, she ran out of her house calling, O oh people, glad tidings, Prophet Idris has returned, relief is near. News spread fast and all the people including the king came in submission asking Idris to pray to God for rain. Idris realized that they were really sincere in their repentance, so he raised his hands to beg God for rain. God answered his prayer and it rained heavily. Idris had many followers. God inspired Idris. He was the first human being to write. God taught him and he passed on this skill to others. As people became further educated, God gave Idris 30 scriptures filled with wisdom and guidance. God also taught Idris how to weave and sew and how they all should worship him. Not long after, Idris passed away and the people continued to follow his teachings and worship God. Eventually, however, his followers began to grow old and die until only a few were left. Soon later, people began to fabricate lies about God and introduce false beliefs and practices into the religion.